an incredible number of myths and tall tales have been created around lemons, which not only do not allow lemons to become a medicine, but often directly harm health. This material was prepared by a nutritionist with a PhD degree. In his arguments, he relies on the results of exclusively scientific studies. To date, there are 27 of them. With a list of all scientific studies, you can familiarize yourself with a special link at the very end in the description of this video. Today with you, we will understand the benefits and possible harms of eating lemons with peel, what substances in the lemon are therapeutic, and how lemons should be consumed, dosage and scheme of intake to turn lemons into your medicine. In the process of our research, we will get 14 conclusions. If you want to become a master of your health, put a like and we'll get started. So, in their research, scientists used either lemon juice or its pulp. You can eat either the pulp or drink the juice, depending on your taste. The effect is absolutely the same. It's just that the juice is a bit easier to measure with spoons. The most popular myth about the right way to eat a lemon is the idea that you must eat them with their peels. Supposedly, all the most beneficial substances and vitamin C, in particular, are concentrated exactly in the peels. This is stated, for example, by Professor Dadali, a biochemist who claims this in many of his interviews. Let's first figure out if there really is more benefit from consuming lemons with their peels than from just drinking lemon juice. In 100 grams of juice or lemon pulp, there is up to a quarter of the daily dose of vitamin C, which is, in principle, quite a lot. But not enough for us since getting enough vitamin from other products is not very easy. Therefore, if Dadali is right and we really can significantly increase the amount of vitamin C by eating lemons with their peels, then it's worth the effort to chew them with the peels. Strict scientific studies inform us that the content of vitamin C in the peel of grapefruit, orange, and lemon amounted to, pay attention, 113 milligrams in grapefruit, 110 milligrams in orange, and 59 milligrams per 100 grams in lemon. That is, there is less vitamin C in lemon than in grapefruit or orange. And in the pulp of these citrus fruits, vitamin C content is 99 milligrams in grapefruit, 89 milligrams in orange, and 47 milligrams per 100 grams respectively. Since the peel constitutes only 15 to 20% of the weight of the lemon, by simply recalculating the content of ascorbic acid, vitamin C, in the peel and in the pulp of the lemon, we will find that 100 grams of lemon will contain 12 milligrams of vitamin C in the peels and 40 milligrams in the pulp, which means almost four times more vitamin C is held in the pulp of the lemon, not in the peel. I grew up in a scientist family, and from a young age, I was taught to respect the words of scientists. Therefore, I could not believe my own eyes and decided to recheck the content of vitamin C in the peel and pulp of lemons in another study. And it turned out that indeed everything is exactly the same. If we look at the content of vitamin C in the peel, pulp, and the lemon as a whole, it turns out that if we compare the average content only in the pulp and in the whole lemon, that is, with the peel and pulp together, it turns out that in the whole lemon, there is only a measly 5 milligrams more vitamin C per 100 grams, which is, in general, absolutely insignificant since the daily norm of vitamin C should exceed at least 300, 400, or even 500 milligrams per day according to modern concepts. Absolutely the same ratio by content of vitamin in the peel and pulp of oranges and grapefruits. Accordingly, we can make our first conclusion that lemon is a significant, important, but not at all unique source of vitamin C. And conclusion number two, from the point of view of vitamin C content, consuming lemon with the peel makes no sense since consuming it with the peel will increase the vitamin C content by an insignificant 5 mg per 100 grams than if you just consumed the pulp or juice. An unexpected turn for Professor Dadali. However, let's consider, maybe it's not the vitamin C that makes lemon peels famous, but some other beneficial substances. Indeed, Professor Dadali claims in his video that it is precisely in the peels where the most beneficial lemon flavonoids which are the most valuable components of it, are contained. Moreover, the most significant amount of them, according to Dadali, is found precisely in the yellow zest of the lemon, because flavonoids supposedly have a yellow color. Yes, indeed, 
Lemons contain a lot of flavonoids, and they are indeed much more valuable medicinal substances than the ubiquitous vitamin C, which is easily obtained from a huge number of different products. Moreover, scientific studies assert that flavonoids have much greater therapeutic value than vitamins or minerals. And besides vitamin C, by the way, lemon contains very few other vitamins, literally fractions of a percent of the recommended daily allowance. So besides vitamin C, it cannot boast of other vitamins, but flavonoid, very much so. The most valuable lemon flavonoids are Hesperidin and Aerocitrin, and their beneficial effect is not limited to the activity of removing harmful free radicals for us. Besides, they also enhance antioxidant cellular protection and reduce the level of inflammation in the body. These same lemon flavonoids, if, of course, consumed correctly and in the right quantities, can also lower cholesterol and triglyceride levels and provide better bone health. As stated in another scientific study, preclinical studies have shown that flavonoids can prevent various types of diseases, including neuro, mental, and cardiovascular diseases. Isn't it beautiful? So, in order to have the golden key in our pocket, we need to figure out where these beneficial flavonoids are more abundant, in the juice or in the peel. The lemon peel is divided into two unequal parts, the thick white part, which is called albedo, and the thin yellow part, also known as the zest, which is called flavedo. Indeed, scientific research confirms that the yellow part of the peel, flavedo, contains twice as many beneficial flavonoids as the pulp of the lemon, but in albedo, the white part of the lemon peel. They are two and a half times more abundant than in the yellow part. But isn't that paradoxical? According to Professor Dadali, a biochemist, flavonoids are supposed to have a yellow color, so the yellow zest should contain them in much greater quantities. This is a paradox. Friends. However, the paradox turned out to be not that flavido, which supposedly should dye the lemon peel yellow, turned out to be more abundant in its white part, where there is no yellowness. In fact, it's not the flavonoids that give lemons their yellow color. Lemon flavonoids are colorless. It is actually carotenoids, as shown by this scientific study. And just as fantastical are Dadali's claims that almost all flavonoids are found in the peels. Considering that the peel constitutes only 15 to 20% of the lemon's weight, it turns out that a whole lemon with peel contains, well, maybe about 15% more flavonoids than a lemon without its peel. But in an orange or grapefruit, the pulp contains approximately half as many flavonoids as the whole fruit with the peel. Maybe we should eat them with the peels. We will figure this out now. But for now, let's make conclusion number three that, from the perspective of flavonoid content, eating lemons with their peel also makes no sense, as it would increase the flavonoid content by an insignificant 10% more than if you just consumed the pulp or juice. Well, maybe there are a lot of microelements in lemons. Alas, friends, both in whole lemons and in the peel, I'm talking about calcium, magnesium, zinc, selenium, copper, it's as if a cat has cried, literally tense. And in some cases, even hundredths of the recommended daily intake. There is indeed a lot of potassium in lemons, and the pulp of the lemon contains approximately 40% of the daily norm in 100 grams, which is quite a lot. But if we compare the pulp and the peel, we'll see that in the pulp, in 100 grams, there is about 113 milligrams of potassium, in the peel 127, so the difference is also insignificant. And for the rest of the microelements, due to their microscopic amounts, this difference does not play any role at all. Therefore, we can sadly conclude number four that both the pulp or juice and the peel of lemons are very poor in microelements, except for potassium, which constitutes 40%. And potassium and other microelements in the peels are insignificantly more abundant than in the pulp. And, therefore, even from the perspective of microelements. Eating lemons with their peels also makes no sense. Therefore, conclusion number five, consuming lemon with its peel does not provide any significant increase in the amount of any beneficial substances, and therefore, from the perspective of usefulness, it makes no sense. However, friends, let's pay attention to the practical sense from the point of view of their harmfulness. The fact is that lemons with their peels can significantly harm your health. But before we move on to this topic, I would like to ask you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your support, and let's continue.
And next, we have a comparison of the harm and benefits of consuming lemons with or without peels. If you eat lemons, you have surely seen it. The fact is that some, not all, but some lemons suddenly get covered with mold during storage and, of course, become inedible. And it was precisely the gray mold that made me wonder whether Professor Dedali's ideas are dangerous for the health of him and my viewers. In a country where lemons simply grow on the streets, and you can go out into the yard and pick a lemon for yourself. So, under lemons, as well as under oranges and grapefruits, there's always a large number of spoiled fruits. Some of them had their peel eaten away, and after that, the fruit simply falls off, while some citrus fruits sometimes directly on the tree, sometimes beneath it, get covered with gray mold. So, friends, if you collect lemons from the street and put them in the fridge, a significantly larger portion of them will get covered with gray mold after some time than lemons that were bought at the market or in the store. And the reason, as you might guess, is in the chemistry, in those very pesticides that protect lemons and other citrus fruits from insects and gray mold. Therefore, I started to wonder how safe it is to consume lemons with peels from the perspective of pesticides, and not just wondered but delved into research and found several very interesting studies one of them investigated the pesticide content in samples of various citrus fruits, including lemons, collected in Sicily. It turned out that the peel, both yellow and albedo, white, contained significantly more pesticides than the pulp. Moreover, a significant amount of pesticides was found in 95% of these citrus samples. Another study was conducted in India. There, the presence of 45 pesticides was determined, and 42 out of 45, were found in the samples of whole citrus pulp with peel. Moreover, the amount of some pesticides was above the permissible level. Meanwhile, only 13 out of 45 pesticides were found in the samples of the edible part of the citrus, that is, without the peel, and in the edible part of the citrus. Their content was within the permissible norms set by, for example, the European Union. So, very strict. But cleaning, as the study writes, turned out to be one of the best ways to get rid of pesticide residues. As for the treatments for gray mold, they are called fungicides, those that kill fungi. Then phenhexamid was found on lemon peels, and it was primarily found on the peels. I became interested in what this phenhexamid was, looked into the research, and it turned out to have a very low toxicity, both for animals and for humans. But this low toxicity was tested in short-term studies, and long-term studies showed that phenhexamid disrupts the endocrine system through estrogen receptors, female sex hormones. Despite its low toxicity, phenhexamid is now defined as a chemical substance that disrupts the state of the endocrine system, that is, our hormonal system. I think, friends, you have already sadly guessed from Professor Dadali's mistakes that it is very easy to remove phenhexamid, samid, and dangerous insecticides. Simply cleaning the lemons is enough. And as another scientific study showed, cleaning reduced the level of pesticide residues in the lemon pulp by 9 to minus 100%. So, could all these factors, which I've told you about, make lemon indeed not exactly useless, but not particularly necessary in our diet? Not at all, friends. The fact is that for certain diseases, lemon can indeed be extremely beneficial. And now, we will figure out how much lemon to eat and according to what scheme in order to treat certain diseases or simply prevent them. We move on to analyzing studies that show which diseases can be treated by consuming lemon, and how exactly. One of the very few substances that is truly abundant in lemons, and even more so than in other citrus fruits, is citric acid, named after the lemon itself. It is a very important food product because citric acid, or its salts, citrates, slow down or prevent the formation of calcium kidney stones, while a low level of citrates in the blood, on the contrary, leads to the appearance of these stones or to a recurrence of the disease. This condition is called hypocitraturia. Citric acid salts in the blood make up to 80% of all stones formed in the kidneys. Therefore, citric acid and products containing it are extremely important, as confirmed by an Italian study. In this study, some patients who had calcium kidney stones removed were given 60 milliliters of lemon juice twice a day, while another group of similar patients did not receive lemon juice. After a year, those who received lemon juice had a recurrence rate of 
while those who did not receive the juice had a recurrence rate of 22% of people, that is, twice as many. This remarkable ability is possessed by lemon juice alone, due to its high content of citric acid and potassium and low sodium content because, as other studies have shown, neither orange juice nor grapefruit juice reduce the formation of calcium kidney stones. By the way, among amateurs and fantasists, you can often find information that lemons are supposedly harmful to the kidneys because they allegedly contain a lot of harmful oxalic acid. And again, they lie to you because, as scientific research has shown, lemons contain a minuscule amount of oxalic acid. Indeed, as the results of another study showed, consuming even large amounts of lemon juice does not increase the risk of forming oxalate stones. That is, lemon consumption significantly reduces the risk of forming calcium stones and does not increase oxalate stones at all. Therefore, we can conclude number eight, that consuming lemons in the amount of 60 milliliters twice a day, that is four large tablespoons, diluted with water, reduces the risk of formation and recurrence of calcium stones by half. And consuming 140 milliliters of lemon juice, which was simply diluted in two liters of water, and drinking these two liters throughout the day, helped burn excess fat. People who drank lemon juice experienced a reduction in fat mass by half a kilogram in just 11 days, while people who just drank water acidified with another acid did not change their weight. Moreover, people who consumed lemon juice had a reduced level of inflammation in the blood. This lowers the risks of diabetes, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases, and did not decrease the level of hemoglobin, the red pigment that helps transport oxygen to our red blood cells, erythrocytes. In the control group, which drank just acidified water, the level of hemoglobin slightly decreased over this time. What is so special in lemons that allows people to lose weight? Nothing special, it is the same citric acid, because, as another study showed, consuming citric acid helps reduce blood sugar levels or, at least, does not allow blood sugar levels to rise too high after consuming high glycemic products, that is, those that significantly raise blood glucose levels. To test this, scientists took a group of volunteers, fed them 110 grams of white bread, and the participants in the study washed it down either with 250 milliliters of plain water or black tea, or a mixture of 125 milliliters of lemon juice and 125 milliliters of water. And it turned out that for those people who drank water or tea, the blood sugar level significantly increased from the baseline by 2.5 mmol per liter which is quite a lot, while for people who consumed the lemon juice solution, it only increased by 1.8 mol per liter. That is, consuming lemon juice allowed blood sugar levels to remain within almost safe limits. And the lower your blood sugar level rises, the less fat accumulates because insulin, which rises following the blood glucose level, directly commands fat cells to accumulate fat. Therefore, consuming lemon juice directly during a meal if you eat sweets or any starchy products, will help you avoid gaining extra weight. And along with citric acid, those very beneficial flavonoids, which are abundant in lemon juice and which allowed the people in the experiment who consumed 140 milliliters of lemon juice, simply diluted with water, to burn fat, will help you lose weight. So, our conclusion number 10 is that consuming lemons by 125 milliliters, that is eight minus nine large tablespoons, before a meal that contains a significant amount of sugar or digestible products or sweets will significantly reduce spikes in blood glucose after eating. And now, lemons and heart matters. Consuming lemons, among other citrus fruits, indeed, in this study, reduced the risk of ischemic stroke by 19% in a study of 70,000 women who were observed for 14 years. Ischemic stroke is the clogging of brain vessels by a thrombus the most common cause of strokes in people, and the risk of ischemic stroke was reduced by 19% in those who consumed the most citrus fruits, compared to those who ate the least. The most was approximately 450 grams of citrus fruits per day. If we talk directly and only about consuming lemons, then in this study of 100 Japanese women, it was found that those of them who consumed half a lemon per day and at the same time moved, that is, made no less than 10,000 steps per day, significantly reduced high blood pressure, and increased the number of erythrocytes, red blood cells, 
And in this case, again, beneficial lemon flavonoids work, which was proven by another study, where flavonoids upon consuming lemon juice in the amount of 50 milliliters, three tablespoons, reduced pulse rate. The reduction of pulse rate indicates that a person becomes calmer and their heart can rest. Consequently, friends, we can make conclusion number 11 that regular consumption of lemon juice by 50 75 milliliters, three minus five tablespoons per day. Again, it should be diluted with water to not be too acidic, allows reducing blood pressure and decreasing the risks of both stroke and cardiovascular diseases. Besides, the consumption of citrus fruits, including lemons, also exhibits anti-cancer activity. In one study, consuming approximately 300 minus 400 grams of citrus fruits, including lemons, per day reduced the risks of pancreatic cancer by 17%. And in another study, approximately the same amounts of citrus fruits, compared to their absence of consumption, reduced the risk of throat cancer by 53% esophageal cancer by 58%, stomach cancer by 31%, colorectal cancer by 18%, and laryngeal cancer risk was reduced by 45%, while the risks of breast, uterus, ovarian, prostate, and kidney cancers were not reduced. Consequently, friends, we can make conclusion number 12 that consuming lemons, as well as any other citrus fruits, significantly reduces the risks of many types of cancer. In addition, consuming lemons, but not alone, rather in combination with garlic, can help you reduce the levels of bad and total cholesterol in your blood. I talk about this in a separate video, highly recommend. However, friends, as always, we know everything has its price, and in the case of lemons, the negative side effects are so minor that it's only their cost in the store. Lemons can increase the risks of heartburn due to their high acidity, and in some people, far from all, they can worsen dental health since lemons are very acidic and they can thin the enamel. It is essential to dilute lemons in water at least two to three or even four times, and then they will be safe for the teeth and insignificantly or not at all increase the risks of heartburn. And the last question that arose for me is how much lemons, which are brought from the country of lemons to other countries, retain their beneficial properties. I asked this question not without reason, those who have watched my video about unhealthy vegetables and fruits know that vegetables and fruits lose a lion's share of their benefits with improper storage. The link to this video is also in the description of this video. Highly recommend it. So, it turns out, lemons, if stored properly, practically do not lose their benefits. Namely, the amount of vitamin C, the amount of flavonoids, the amount of citric acid, and potassium. And storing lemons is very simple. You either put them in a regular cotton bag, wrap them in a cotton cloth, or even just paper, and place them in a plastic bag. The cotton fabric will absorb the water that will be released from the lemons, and the plastic bag will not let this water evaporate. Thus, lemons will stay much fresher and retain all their benefits inside. This, friends, is what our conclusion number 14 tells us. And lemons, as scientific studies show, should indeed be stored in the refrigerator at a temperature from 0 to 5 degrees Celsius which is approximately 41 degrees Fahrenheit. More information on this topic can be found on our channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. Please like and share this video with your friends. Thank you to our sponsors for their support. I look forward to your comments and encourage you to watch these helpful videos.